in our times, we have all been experiencing such a big challenge first with the pandemic and the uncertainty about um, our health and about the spread of the pandemic and uh, being in a totally new situation and um, plus all the other challenges that have happened for many people, losing dear ones and economic instability and um, so many things. And then the ecological problems are there. And now on top of all that, Again, we receive another challenge, which is um, what's happening um, right now in Europe. But we need to step back a little bit and take refuge in what teachings from uh, millenary traditions, uh, thousands of years of observing the human mind, heart, and the way we relate are telling us, and that's yoga and Qigong, both of them over 3,000 years old, um, where they were observing, you know, how, how do we react when we have fear, when we have anger, when we have sadness and despair. And of course, humanity has gone through many of these stages, and that doesn't diminish the intensity of the stage and how it affects all of us. But um, it's important how we look at it, you know, how we um, are able to work with ourselves, with our mind and, and, and our hearts to move from reactivity to a balanced presence, to move from reaction, knee-jerk reaction, um, to a response, a, a, a real, um, kind, calm, um, encompassing response and having remember the bigger picture too. So what does yoga tell us about these times? What does Qigong tell us? What does Buddhism tell us? And what does neuroscience tell us? And they are all uh, showing us um, some important principles that we need to remember and uh, we are also going to do some practices to embody these principles. So yoga, uh, in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, the Bible of yoga, the first aphorism is what's yoga? Yoga is the cessation of the fluctuations of the mind. Yeah, but how do we do that? <laughs> you know, how do we stop our mind when we are totally immersed on the fear and the uncertainty and, and the sadness of so much distraction? So um, the three and four uh, sutras that continue after is a cessation of the fluctuations of the mind. It says, so that the seer, which is a real nature, a capacity to observe and to understand and to process, doesn't get confused with the seeing, you know, which is with what we are seeing. And, and that could be at a personal level, or it could be at a, uh, international level, at a national level, you know, what sometimes, often, I mean, it's our natural tendency, we just identify with what comes up inside us and or what the media is telling us, the social media, the other media, uh, what really is happening in the countries, you know, all that, all these other, um, stimuli, which of course affect us. I mean, we are human, we, we react, we respond, we feel. So it's not about not feeling, but it's about having yet one more uh, little bit of a space to remember and trust what's deeper, deepest in us, which is our Buddha nature, which is what in um, classical yoga would be called the seer, you know, the higher self, the capacity to observe. And also Qigong tell us that we are a continuum, that, uh, that we are a continuum with everything around us. So the, the way we experience our chi, you know, our, our vital energy also affects the people around us, you know, and uh, it affects of course the whole of our organism and it affects our imme immediate communities and our bigger communities. And Qigong, the same as yoga, um, reminds us that we are spirit 
you know, we're a continuum of body, mind, and spirit, and that that body, mind, and spirit is part of a bigger body, mind, and spirit, which is the planet, which is our communities, which is the universe. And so, okay, that's all very interesting, but how, how, how do I come back to, um, to some space of peace so that I can cultivate peace in these times and so that I can embody peace? And uh, Buddhism tells us that life is impermanent and, and we know it. I mean, if we look around, we know that things keep changing. You know, nobody expected on the beginning of January or February that this was going to happen. Nobody expected that the pandemic was going to happen. Nobody expected perhaps getting sick with a terminal disease, which may be the case of some of you who are here or with a very painful um, uh, condition or is or losing a, a loved one or two loved ones, you know, or several, and, you know, so life, it brings us all these different components of joy and pain and um, moments of peace and moments of uh, turbulence. The important thing is how can we work to regain balance and how can we work to actually act actively cultivate peace while still caring for everything that happens around. So how to hold all this in a way that <clears throat> it doesn't overrun us, uh, that we have our feelings and then somehow we are able to go deeper into this deeper nature we all have, what in Buddhism is called the Buddha nature and um, in uh, terms of uh, uh, good functioning of our body will be regaining balance, regaining homeostasis. Well, um, something else that Buddhism teaches is that pain is unavoidable because life is impermanent. And so there are things that happen that are not what we would want or we would have expected or what we thought that we could more or less control or whatever. So pain is unavoidable, but suffering comes from resistance, you know, so um, saying, why me? Why now? Uh, why this evil person? Why this? You know, why all the time that we just put it outside and we are trying to find some kind of a solution from outside, we are letting the outside circumstances and the outside solutions rule us. While the only space we really, really can work on and make a difference is our inner space. And from there inform a clear participation in whatever we can do in our immediate community. So I'm not saying ignore everything, just try to find some space of not caring. No, no, be informed, care and participate. But first of all, work with that space inside you. What you resist persists, remember that. <laughs> what you resist persists. Be the pain, you know, you feel pain in your body and you just close up and contract more and whatever you feel more the pain. I mean, it's totally natural. We contract when there is pain. We get upset when we are trusting something and it is making us more confused or whatever. Of course we go, but, but come on, you know, I'm, I'm trusting you. Why are you not giving me, you know, this support? Or, or sometimes we are with a, let's say with a sister or a brother uh, trying to take care of an older person and we disagree, uh, our mother, let's say, it's not my case, but I have seen several of these cases and it could have been my case. Um, and then disagreeing and the, the two sisters fighting and saying, how can you say this to me? You know, how can you do this? How can you do that? You know, what you resist persists because you close up and you tense and you fight it. And the more you fight it with fear, with anger, with sadness, with all these natural things that we tend to go to, the more it will persist. So, and in my opinion, uh, fighting fire with fire is a way of making it persist. So um, we will not talk too much about politics. I'm go going to keep this in a spiritual and practical level, but it seems to me that adding more weapons to the weapons 
is not the best way to go. Um, there ne we need to, this is a wake up call, like George Floyd's death was a wake up, wake up all call to find new ways to relate international, diplomatically, economically, um, internet wise, whatever way, other ways to be uh, able to relate without killing. It seems we are much more prepared for killing than for saving lives. And the money, our money, our tax is going to killing instead of to support saving lives. I'm going to cut it there. <laughs> Let's come back to our practices. But um, so in, in Buddhism, they tell us, look to how you are responding to uncertainty, to fear, to pain, to anger, to sadness, and don't add more resistance to that. Accept it as part of uh, materials that you are given to work with. So the question would be, and how can I work with this? Um, and it would also be, okay, what am I feeling? And is this the reaction that I'm having, is it helping the situation? Is it really helping in a sustainable, longer way? Um, be it a personal uh, problem or a global problem. Um, and then go, okay, and how? How can I work with this so that you keep helping to develop more consciousness in myself to somehow help with the situation? And we are going to slightly touch on that in a moment. So what you resist persists and what you cultivate grows. So these are two sides of something that can help us in our own personal problems and if you like community or international problems to gain some perspective back. So be careful what you resist, persist, and also be hopeful what you practice, what you cultivate grows. And that's where it comes then to again our um, responsibility and our invitation to cultivate peace within ourselves, to cultivate kindness within ourselves, and um, to do what we can within our circles of influence. Uh, one, uh, sorry, I'm just muting a, a microphone that was open. To do what we can within our uh, circles of influence. So another, um, way to take heart uh, during times of up upheaval and, and to go from reactivity to a balanced presence is to, to, and we are going to practice this right now, is to get in touch with our feelings and then knowing that we tend to go to the negative and so there is a bunch of, uh, of grapes, of sour grapes like fear, um, confusion, anger, sadness, despair, uh, feeling, feeling paralyzed often, uh, then how can we move from that to what is calling us from deeper in, which is to love, to support life, um, to care, and if we feel, well, I don't know how to do that at an international level, you can always do it at a local level. So go and help someone in your immediate environment. And also remember that what you cultivate grows and what you embody and give example that multiplies. I heard the other day a mother, a Russian mother saying that her son um, was in kindergarten and had a friend and they were you know friends and then after all the, the news and all that the little kid uh, the friend told her son when I grow up I'll kill you and I think that's a that's a good thing to remember I mean what what are we um, what are we radiating? Is it, okay, there is one bad person and that person has this ethnicity. And so, you know, this, if we just can kill this bad person, everything is going to be all right. 
Mm, sure. I mean, <laughs> behind the bad person, there are many other economic interests and many other fights for power. So, and, and how much the weapon industry is really flourishing at this moment. So we need to be careful, you know, the, what we cultivate grows and what we cultivate individually radiates out in our immediate circles. For example, with our children, with our families, with our friends. So the invitation today is that at a, at a personal level, if you have you know, a challenge, a, uh, a sickness, a pain in your body, uh, or if you are facing aging and, um, and uh, have other kinds of problems in your, in, I mean, aging doesn't necessarily have to be a problem, but <laughs> you know, whatever, whatever it is that you're facing at a, at a personal level or at a community level, the invitation now is to pause and we're going to practice a little bit that. Connect with our feelings and with our natural uh, reactivity which is true, we just have that. But with the pausing, we can establish a little bit of a space between the reactivity and the uh, stories, the narrative that we tell ourselves, and then see if we can um, ask ourselves, is this helping me? Is this helping the situation? Is it helping the other person? And if not, uh, how, how can this be part of it? bigger journey of awakening and then work towards that towards cultivating some kind of trust in this big journey and and neuroscience comes here also neuroscience is um when we have this fear uncertainty anger reactivity you know all these negative emotions that we have a, at least five to one tendency to go to uh, what happens is that the amygdala gets stimulated. Uh, it's a part in the brain that has the shape of an almond. And the emotions keep feeding into each other and with the thoughts, and they keep proliferating. And when that gets activated and send messages to the rest of the brain, this part, the frontal cortex, which is the one that we need to think clearly and to come up with new solutions and to connect with a more uh, balanced presence, also with our heart, you know, listening to the deeper, deeper values, it gets blocked. So that's what neuroscience tells us, you know, be careful because when all this keeps proliferating, then the part that you need the most to take really important decisions personally or internationally or whatever gets blocked. And then you keep just, you know, galloping with your emotions. I love, I love an image that comes um, from a legend that says uh, a person was uh, on a horse, you know, um, going fast and somebody from the side says, hey, where are you going so fast? And the person, the horse says, I don't know, ask the horse. <laughs> you know, that's what happens with our emotions. And it, we all go through that. And, and probably every day in a smaller or bigger way. So learn, well, let's see if we can get the reins for those horses. Okay, so that's a practice that I invite us to do today. Um, to trust that we are a spirit, that we came to this life to receive a whole package, mixed package of uh, easy moments and more difficult moments and that the more difficult moments are not unusual and they are not something to be resisted, but they are the moments that shake us to awaken to greater consciousness, to greater love, to greater um, call for practice, for peace and for healing. Um, so, I, what helps me in these moments is that I totally trust that we are a spirit in a very long journey of evolution from the very beginning of the universe. And that there are many studies that show that in the evolution of the universe, if you would have gone just a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a second quicker, it could have 
imploded and if it would have been you know fraction etc uh slower it would have exploded or whatever and it never did it always at those moments changed towards life and so i do believe that our spirit is not separated from the spirits around us of other people and that we all are part of a greater um, organism in the planet and in the universe and so that it is slow it has a lot of deviations a lot of um, times we forget and we do you know we step back and then every time we step back if we keep paying attention we go oh I step back let me see if I now can come forward so don't flagellate yourself just keep recommitting and trusting. And even in the last moment, let's say um, we are facing um, that we are dying of a sickness or whatever, um, just kind of remembering, okay, I'm a spirit, I took this body, um, it helped me to experience many things and uh, go through life. And now it's time to, uh, surrender to this journey and go you know i totally believe that spirit doesn't disappear because it doesn't depend on matter uh, we come into the river of life and we take a body and then at the end we leave the body and the spirit continues and uh, and so if i if we can trust that if we can trust that we are not just matter and that we don't depend on the outer circumstances and that we are a huge invitation to work with the problems to advance in our consciousness and in our ways of relating and interrelating um, then we can work with everything because everything will be okay this also belongs and how do I work with this and that's that it helps us to share a, a big burden because it, it, it helps us to trust that that yoga calls the seer and that qigong calls shen the spirit and that uh, <clears throat> buddhism calls buddha nature and that all the ancient traditions all over the world have recognized like our true nature which gets covered with lots of um identification with our daily life, <laughs> which we of course want to live our, our daily life, but we are trying to find some ways to regain balance and inform our actions from a place of a little bit more balance. And this is special invitation in these days. So, all right. So now let's do a few practices together, okay? So how uh, do we do this? Okay, partly we need to understand the general perspective, which is what I shared with you before. And then the other thing is we need to root it, embody it in our body. And we have an amazing body and um, an amazing mind also that can be our ally or it can be uh, our, uh, we can be enslaved to it. So how can we work with our body? so that we have a mind that is an ally and that the heart also participates in informing the, the brain. Science before used to think that the brain was the one that figured everything out. But in the last two or three decades, they are realizing that the, the brain only interprets the signs that come from the body. So if the heart is agitated, if... Um, our fear is upsetting our digestion and all that and everything is just kind of sending those signs to the brain then the brain goes we are under great threat let's stop everything else let's just you know put adrenaline so that we can run and fire, fire, uh, fight uh, fly or fight uh, in some cases it's so much that we become immobilized so we cannot just use the brain to understand things we have to root them in the body so we have to calm the body to calm the mind to access the spirit okay and how <laughs> how do we calm the body uh should i take some prozac or anything you know prozac relax the body not the mind well the problem is it has some other side effects so 
but you have the whole pharmacy within you. So that's a great news. And it responds to your attention and intention and your touch. So we are going to bring our hands, you know, this uh, in Qigong, we talked that there is a vortex of healing energy right here in the center of the palm. Uh, lagoon and this one too. And so we are going to bring this vortex of energy, of, of healing energy to a point here in the breast. Um, you know about acupuncture, there are all these different points that in Chinese medicine was, were discovered through thousands of years of um, experimentation and observation of the relation between the emotions and the organs and the inner balance and what affected what. So they discovered a point, uh, <coughs> four finger breath from the end of your breastbone. They discovered a point, four finger breath from the end of your breastbone. So you go through your breast, breastbone, come to the end, and then four finger breath up. It's more or less at the height of the nipples. There is a point here that's called Sea of Tranquility. How wonderful, exactly what we need today, Sea of Tranquility. So we are going to find that point. I mean, you more or less count four finger breaths from the end of the breastbone. And then you put the center of your palms. So let's rub our palms a little bit. That generates circulation of blood and chi. And then we are going to put our hands right there, covering the sea of tranquility point. Uh, another thing that happens is when you bring your hands, which are usually engaged in the world, doing things, whatever they are doing, and you let go of the world for a moment and just come back inwardly with an intention and attention for peace, in the gesture itself of bringing your hands like this, you already find some respite, some um, support and grounding. So we bring our hands, our healing hands to our sea of tranquility point. We do a few deep breaths like sign. Just noticing your breath. And if you can at this moment, Adding a little bit of equality of sign, so inhaling like sign. Exhaling like sign. I know in English they mainly do sign as an exhale, but in Spanish we say suspirando and we use it inhale and exhale. It's just a more relaxed inhale. And then a more relaxed exhale. And then while you are offering this uh, beginning to turn inwards and sensing the touch of your hands on your heart, uh, connecting with, you know, making a pause in your life to do this. So I very much recommend it to do it several times a day. Put the hands like this, have a few. Inhale and exhale. Let's see if we can do the exhale a little bit longer than the inhale that produces a little bit more relaxation, this stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the one about repair, growth, rest. And we are going to combine this with a Taoist practice that uses this inhale and exhale to let go of the all when we exhale. So let go of layers and layers of anxiety, tension that we might have. And in the inhale, inhaling, inviting, Peace. At this moment, you are in a safe place. You are surrounded by all our friends, 
this community that's practicing. So allowing yourself to feel peace and also connecting with your own spiritual life, your own trust and the spirit. So taking in the new, taking hope, taking trust and exhaling the anxiety, the tension, inviting your body to relax. When your body relaxes, your mind relaxes because the mind is a process that happens to the body. So inhaling through the nose, exhaling a long exhalation through the mouth now. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Inviting the whole body to relax. Remembering your intention as you decided to take this workshop this weekend, your intention for peace, for healing, taking that as a reality as you inhale, cultivating it in your body and letting go of your pain, your fear, your anxiety in layers. Setting the intention for this time together of shedding in whatever way you can, the anxiety, the fear, the anger, sadness, and taking in what you want to cultivate in your life, what you want to radiate in your world in small measures, just whatever way is possible. Or as big as you feel natural for you right now. Okay, so this is a practice, very simple. You can do it several times a day, bringing your healing hands to your heart, to your sea of tranquility point, and inhaling, like sighing, exhaling a longer exhale, and letting go of whatever you feel is limiting and starting to um, tide you up. And now let's do it again, but with another uh, little bit of a longer process. So we start again with the hands here. Inhaling what we want to invite. Exhaling what we want to let go. And for a moment now, as we inhale, let's just allow a little time to connect with what is going on right now in you. So we are taking a pause and then we are feeling our feelings. The trouble feelings too so that we don't push them away and we don't try to suppress them because they will keep ticking inside. So we are now bringing to the foreground whatever feelings we have been feeling these last days or that we have with reference to a particular challenge that we have. Just for a moment, embracing what's there as a challenge and maybe reactivity and acknowledging it and knowing that's part of our human nature to feel these things, to have this tendency towards the negative. And then behind that pain or that anger or whatever it is that's there, maybe we can name it to create a little bit of a space, name it, to tame it.
as you keep breathing and inviting the body to relax. So this is what happens in meditation. On the one hand, you are being aware of what arises in front of the mirror. And on the other hand, you are calmly becoming a witness and inviting the body to relax, to disengage from that prison of the thoughts and emotions while still observing them with loving awareness, with compassion. And now behind this negative emotions, let's go even deeper and see what is calling to be nurtured. Behind that fear, behind that sadness, what is calling to be nurtured within you? Not philosophically, just in your heart. What deep vulnerability is asking? to be nurtured so that we can transition from blindly putting our energy into the negative to reclaiming that energy and guiding it to what deeper in us is asking. This is what I want to nurture. I want to see a better relationship with my sister. I want to be in peace with my processes of my sickness. I want to trust this process, even if it is uncertain and I don't know where, where to turn for good information or whatever. I want to trust the deeper, my deeper sense of peace, my deeper sense of spirit, of love. And I know that many people in the world are also wanting love and peace. And I, I want to put in the universe this, and in my life this. And then maybe you could, for a moment, explore what would be the first step we see in your life today, this weekend, and after the workshop, of course, but what, what can be that you can cultivate to nourish that that's calling to be nurture in your life? Taking heart, trusting, remembering other times when you have been in difficult situations and how you were able to move forward. Everything that has brought you to this moment. And that opens new possibilities of being, of relating in your life to yourself and to others. So there is an acronym called RAIN, 
which uh, has been developed by several spiritual teachers. And the RAIN acronym, it starts first for recognizing. Of course, you first have to take a pause, right? So that you can observe and then recognize what's going on and accept it. Again, with this trust that is part of a greater journey of awakening and that is in fact material for each of us to work with in this journey of awakening consciousness. So recognize, allow, accept, you know, don't resist, but, <laughs> and then inquire, inquire what is asking to be nurtured. How, how can this be an opportunity to keep learning, to keep growing personally and um, a community? And then nurturing it in whichever way you can, which usually starts in your immediate circles. If you want to participate in donating to other places, by all means, but also know that um, cultivating inner peace and helping someone who's near you is it's a very good way to bring peace in the world and to avoid bad othering others, to avoid um, at some level keeping cultivating more uh, distance and possible violence if it at all possible. Uh, stand up and also have a place where you can uh, extend your arms without bumping with another person or with the, with the furniture. How are we doing? Great. So I want us to remember also that Babaji, Baba Haridas, um, the one who founded Mama Donna and is one of my main teachers, he always used to tell us, you know, peace is a continuous process of practicing peace. Uh, it's, you probably cannot hope that there will be peace once and forever, but we can be reminded that peace is working for peace and cultivating peace. And, um, and of course, yoga and Qigong also help us to remember that we can embody it and that that way it also is more sustainable. So let's let's see how we can embody peace by practicing this, for example, this movement from Qigong. Qigong is like yoga, but from China. So also thousands of years old and understanding the continuity of body, mind, and spirit, and also the continuity of human being with everything around and uh, in community and in the universe and in the whole planet. So the practice is like this. We stand with the feet shoulder width apart, body straight and relaxed. And the body aligned. So to have a sense of the body aligned, it's good to sense that the head is like a sphere, perfectly rest, resting, uh, perfectly balanced on top of the sphere of the chest. And both of those spheres balanced on the sphere of the abdomen. And that's supported by the legs. Uh, and the legs are supported by the feet that are touching the earth, so, or this, the floor. So we are going to move a little bit the toes up and down to feel the whole contact of the feet with the floor. And we are also going to rock a little bit forward and backward, just a little bit like a bamboo moved by the breeze. And then at some point stop so that you find your own alignment in a balanced way, still with the arms relaxed. And this particular movement that we're going to practice together goes like this. We inhale, bring the arms up to the height of the shoulders more or less, and then bring one hand towards the chest and then turn the palm out and move the hand like this. And then inhale as we stretch the two hands, one, 
one is uh, receiving energy from the earth, the other palm from the heavens. We feel the stretch on the side. And then eventually in the palm, the arm comes down slowly. So this movement is called the white crane spreads its wings. We are going to combine it now with inhaling and exhaling. So we inhale, exhale, bringing the hand towards the chest, exhale, still, inhale, exhale. So when we do these movements, these are contemplative movements. So on the one hand, we are going to be noticing the movement itself. And on the other hand, I would like for you to notice the calmness within the movement, the stillness within the movement. So again, inhaling, exhaling, exhaling, inhaling, Exhaling. We'll do it several times. So eventually you feel more familiar with it and then you'll be able to start relaxing even more. Inhaling. Exhaling. The hand comes towards the chest. Keep exhaling as we now separate a little bit from that. And then inhale with the palms up and the other palm down, receiving energy from the heavens and the earth, and then exhaling, lowering the arm. So what's happening here is that we are opening the chest. We are also, when arms come up and down, the, there is a lowering of uh, the blood pressure. Now I want us to use this movement to reflect on how to work with the stimulus that we receive. So, and, and the feelings that we feel and how to create a little bit more of a space to open up for inspiration. So, um, and just a movement again is inhaling, then you bring the hand towards your chest. Like if you're observing, you know, what is that's happening with you. And then when the hand's going like this, it's like, okay, time to create a little bit of a space here, disengage from this chain of, negative thoughts and then opening myself to inspiration one hand pushes down and the other one goes up opening to inspiration from the heavens and the earth the connection with everything around in a bigger perspective perspective and then extending the hand like a possibility of new beginnings new ways of relating to ourselves and to others. So again, inhaling, taking a pause, observing what's going on with us, embracing it, and then also realizing you cannot stay stuck on it. So creating a bit of space and opening yourself to trust the journey of evolution and asking inspiration from the earth and the heavens and then spreading your wing with possibility of new beginnings, new understandings, what do you want to nurture? What do you want to cultivate? And noticing the aliveness within the stillness. And now noticing the stillness within the movement, inhaling, Exhaling, accepting what's going on with us and creating more space inside. Inhaling. Trusting. Nurturing what's being called within us towards peace, towards love, towards healing. Inhale, exhale, keep exhaling, and 
bringing ourselves to inspiration from the heavens and the earth. Trusting. Being ready to spread our wings for new beginnings. Noticing the aliveness, noticing the stillness. And the stillness is in the movement. It is like a prayer for a clear heart so that we can connect with the seer that yoga tells us about, that capacity of witnessing with loving awareness, with equanimity, with trust. Give me a clear heart so that I know how to work with this. And we know, we know what brings us peace. We know what can help in our relationships. Just have to keep remembering and embodying it. In whatever measure we can, without judging ourselves, remembering that when we cultivate that growth, and so we keep recommitting Asking for inspiration from the heavens and the earth. And embody new ways of relating. Noticing the aliveness within the stillness. One last time, we are going to do it from both sides. The stillness within the movement. That our actions too might be a balanced presence, maybe a balanced presence. Stillness within the movement.
bringing into our life, what we want to cultivate in this time together and so after the workshop. Bringing our hands together, our feet together. We bring our hands like in prayer to our third eye, to our forehead. And we give thanks for the many teachings and teachers that have accompanied us in many different ways. And for life, with all its ups and downs that have overcome us, how to trust, how to hope. how to work with the challenges. And then we bring our hands like in prayer to our heart. And we send a whiff of peace, of healing to someone that we know that's struggling right now. Envisioning that person Or persons, if you want to have a bigger group, ambition in peace, and sending to that person or persons love, healing, sometimes it's easier to work with just one person. So you can visualize the person and send directly to them and sense that the burden may be relief, but maybe your heart is calling for a whole group, in which case also send positive, sharing your peace, your healing with them, it multiplies. So that's what we also uh, also help us to take heart in difficult times is we work on ourselves and then we share whatever we have experienced, send it so that it can be shared. We sort of us who are practicing and all of your families and friends and the bigger world putting this experience into the big pool of humanity. We are going to put something, better put this than fear and disastrous thoughts that don't help at all. So thank you so much for having come today and for having practiced together. And all these teachings are just like a very little seed and for them to fructify, you have to practice.